Hello and welcome to this the third part of the eight recording in the Azure demo series. So in this particular recording, we'll continue from where we stopped earlier. Um, we'll proceed to exercise number three now where we'll deploy multi-container application using Docker Compose um, to a Docker host on Azure. So what, what does that mean? Let's just explain just a little bit there. So what Docker Compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container Docker applications. So if I bring up this URL, this URL here gives an overview of what Docker Compose is and, and what it does. Essentially, there's three main steps that we need to follow to run um, a multi-container application. We'll define what the environment will look like, so it's going to be like a declarative model. So you see an example of what, what that looks like. So we'll, we'll define our app environment with a Docker file, so that it can be reproduced anywhere. And then we'll define the services that make up our application um, in the manifest file, uh, which is um, YAML in this case. So you can see what that looks like. We're specifying this version 3, and we're specifying yeah, the services that we need. Um, we need this the service it's going to be using this image and these are the parts that's going to be translated these are the volumes that it's going to have access to so essentially we'll define what our environment will, will look like and then we'll, we'll submit that to docker compose which will go ahead and implement that on our behalf so we don't have to be going there's a container one there's container two let's get the link and all that stuff going so let, let's see how that works so um, going to the instruction that we're following. So first thing is we're still on the management machine that we're using and what we want to ensure number one is to ensure that uh, we have Docker Compose already installed, which of course we do. If I run that, that will show us the version of Docker Compose that we have. And by the way, if you want to get more help on Docker Compose, you can just type Docker iPhone Compose, iPhone, iPhone, or space iPhone, iPhone help and that will give us a bunch of information of the different commands that we can run um, using docker compose so first thing that we'll do is we'll create this manifest file that de defines our environment so notepad docker compose.yml so it's going to say hey i can find this file but you want me to create a new file yes of course we want you to create a new file um, and what i'll do also is i'll make the font larger so that you can view what typed easily okay so what i'll do is i'll copy the content that we have here and i'll paste this here so we have this content so let's go ahead and copy that again because it's very important and i will tell you why i'm copying it again here you're like yeah but you pasted it already i'll tell you why see right at the beginning of this there's two spaces here we have to ensure that we copy those two spaces so this is very important in this sense we have to ensure that we leave the spaces um, here also. So um, the services that we're going to be deploying, so we're going to be deploying a service called WordPress and the image that we're going to be using is we're going to be using the WordPress image. If I do, for example, a Docker um, image, Docker image list, it's going to show us what images exist locally. And remember that the com the environment that we're currently operating in, we're operating in the environment of the Docker host in Azure. In other words, even though I'm running the commands on this machine here, right? The environment that we're operating is on this machine here. So when I'm saying show me list of Docker images, it's showing me list of Docker images here because we configured our environment here to point to this. Okay. So, so in this case, I don't have any. I don't have the WordPress image there. What it's gonna do is it's gonna check locally. If it does not find it, it's gonna reach out to Docker Hub, and it's gonna download the latest version of the image from there. And we specified the links. It's gonna be linked to this other service called DB, which we defined below here, and it's gonna be linked to DB on that pod. So what about the pods that we'll be using? We'll be using pod eighty eighty on the host's IP address will be translated to port 80 on our own IP address. And then we'll define the database um, service. And the image that we're using should be using the MariaDB image. 
and the environment um, we specify the MySQL password. So in other words, we've, we've defined multiple containers here um, that we're going to be using to make up our application. So once we've defined that, we can go ahead and save this and then I can close that. So the very next thing that I need to do in this case is because this the docker dot y um, docker um, compose dot yml which is a manifest file it's in the same location here if I do di here it's in this location so that's it in this location here so that's fine so wow can so the next step is we just use docker compose of d to essentially execute that. So once I run this, it's gonna begin the execution of that. So let's go enter. And you see instantly starts to execute that. It goes, hey, I'm trying to find the Maria DB image. You can find it. Yep, let's go ahead and deploy. Let's go ahead and download that from Docker um, Orb. And implement that so it's going through the process so I don't think it should take that long because the the um, most intensive thing that it's going to do is it's going to um, go ahead and download the images and once it's done that it's just a matter of deploying them which should not take long at all So let's go back to the diagram where it's doing all the process. So here's what we'll be doing. We'll have, because we already have NGINX image running in a container already. But what we'll now do is we'll have a two tier container or a two tier container, which is NGINX running in a container, MariaDB running in another container, and then we're linking them together but all deployed using Docker Compose. And this is what we're doing now. Let me move this one up to the other side because we've not deleted it, we leave it running. So that's what we'll have when that finishes. And that's done. That's done, completed <laughs> now. So if I do a Docker PS now, you can see now that I have three containers running. I have the WordPress is the one I just deployed and MariaDB and the initial one that I deployed the NGINX. If I do a Docker image list, I can see that it's already downloaded all those other images. Um, so the next thing that we'll do, um, let's bring up our overview document here is we want to just verify what we just deployed now. So that's task number three. And what we'll be doing is we'll need to open the needed network security group port for access to our application. Remember that when we did the initial deployment, let's go back here. When we did the initial deployment, if I go under resource groups and I go under that resource group, this network security group we only specified to open port 80. So that's the only parts that we specified. So now that we've um, deployed a container that we've translated just port 8080, we need to allow port 8080 here. So I'll go ahead and click add to that and say port NSOS destination 8080 and I'll specify TCP and I'll say allow port 8080. I'll change the priority to 150 and I'll go ahead and click OK. So in my experience, you have to let this really bed in. So give it a while. In some cases, whenever you see uh, anything like you're modifying a root table in Azure or you're, cr you're creating a new security rule in Azure and you see the option that says, hey, I've created a security rule. From my experience, what that essentially just means is I've successfully submitted a job to the Azure Fabric Controller. It takes a while before you see that take effect. So let's just give it a few minutes. It's going to take effect. And when it does, what we'll do is let's get the command that will give us the IP address of our Docker machine again. Oh, sorry, of our 
Docker hosting Azure again. And then we'll go to this on port 8080 and we should be able to access our WordPress um, container that's linked to the uh, Maria DB in the back end. So just give it a while. Let's go HTTP and then port 8080. And here we go. Look at that. We're linked into WordPress already. And then we can carry on with the configuration and all, all of that specify database configuration. Now, I hope that that makes um, some sense to you. So that's completion of exercise number three. So I'll stop this recording now. And when I come back, we'll proceed to exercise number four, where we'll um, do a demo of implementing Azure um, Container Registry. So Azure Container Registry, the, the description is in, in the name, right? It's a registry for container images. It allows us to be able to store and manage images for all types of container deployment. So we're talking about Docker Swarms, Kubernetes, Mesosphere, DCOS. It allows us to be able to store images for all this um, different container deployments. So we'll do that in the next video recording. Thanks very much for watching this and I'll see you in the next recording.